Now, could a peanut a day help fend off a deadly allergy? That's the new suggestion from one study. Let's bring in Richard Lasseter, who has a serious nut allergy, and Professor Stephen Till, Professor of Allergy at Guy's and St Thomas's Hospital uh, and King's College London. A very good morning uh, to you both. Richard, I'll start with you. I mean, uh, rewind the clock a few years for us. How severe was your nut allergy? Good morning. Yeah, it was uh, pretty severe. I ended up in, in hospital... Uh, over a, over a decade, a couple of times, pretty seriously. Uh, but one time in in the UK, thankfully close to St Thomas's, and then another time uh, at the end of the world in South America. It was incredibly nerve wracking, uh, not only for me but also for my wife. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, th thankfully I was I was able to come through those. Certainly on both occasions, I found myself asking the nurse if I was if I was going to make it. Uh, so it was it was definitely very very uh, worrying. Um, so, so so yeah, it was something I'd always dealt with through my life and. Obviously, when this trial came along, it was uh, incredibly exciting and something I wanted to be part of. Professor Till, talk us through exactly what the, the, the trial is. On one level, it sounds fairly simple. Yes, yeah, so the principle of desensitisation is that you expose someone who's allergic to a particular allergen in, in small quantities, and then you gradually increase that over time. And that's what we did in these peanut allergic adults. We gave them tiny, really minuscule amounts of peanut protein. And then every two weeks, we escalated this uh, with the aim of eventually reaching the equivalent of four whole peanuts every day. And uh, two thirds of the patients who started that could then tolerate these four peanuts daily uh, at the end of the study. And in fact, they, most of them could even go higher than this, could, could tolerate greater amounts. Uh, it took a fair amount of time. And uh, of course, you know, in allergic individuals, when you give them things that they are potentially severely allergic to, it has to be done very carefully and under very controlled medical conditions. Well, just elaborate on that point for us quickly, Professor. I mean, you started, as you said, under very careful medical conditions, but also with minuscule, minuscule amounts. And this should be absolutely not something people try at home with any allergies. Yes, that's definitely the case. Not something to do at home. And the, the small, you know, the quantities that we started off with were, were really, you know, what we call milligram quantities. So very tiny amounts of peanut flour. Um, and then eventually, you know, building that up over a period of many months to the point where then patients could consume actually, like I said, four nuts a day. Um, so, yes, yeah, definitely not something to do at, at home. It does require medical supervision. R Richard, was this something you ran towards to try or was it fairly nerve wracking? There was definitely a sense of nerves at first. Uh, you know, you have to get your mind around the idea that something you've tried to avoid your whole life, you're now going to, to eat as part of a trial. Um, but I think uh, at the point that uh, I found out about the trial, it was something I was really keen to do. I'd obviously had a couple of you know, incidents reasonably fresh in my mind of what happens uh, when I do uh, accidentally eat peanuts. So uh, whilst there was a sense of trepidation, the team were incredibly good at uh, keeping me relaxed, uh, creating an environment within the hospital for the trial that you know allowed you to feel safe uh, and in the, in their care. Uh, so uh, once you got once I got going, I really didn't uh, think too much about the the sort of the the, the previous experiences I'd had. P Professor, can this be expanded to other areas of allergies? Do you think? So, do you mean other types of food allergy, for example? Sure. Um, so, well, so potentially, yes, the principle should be applicable to other food allergens. But what I would say is that different foods can behave differently in terms of uh, the amounts that are required to cause reactions and how severe the reactions are. So to do it in other foods, you really do need to do trials for those specific foods individually. Um, and in terms of, Richard, what comes next, do you feel like you're over this now? I mean, I doubt you'll be grabbing for bags of peanuts, but do you feel safe if somebody else were doing that? Yes, absolutely. I think, you know, the, the idea that I take four peanuts a day now after my breakfast is, is, is a you know, well-worn routine. I know it's something I'll do for the rest of, rest of my life. Um, I'm certainly much more confident and, and calm when, when I go out to dinner with my wife, for example, or when we go travelling. Um, I know that that accidental exposure to peanuts isn't going to cause a serious reaction like it had done in the past. Mm. Whilst at the same time, I should stress I'm not going and ordering, you know, a whole plate of satay chicken, for example. So uh, I, I, I deal with it pretty well and, and it's just become part of my everyday life. It's, it's funny you use the phrase that you take four peanuts a day, like, like they're medicine. I mean, do, do you not enjoy eating? Do, do you like the flavour? Or is it just too associated with that 
lifelong fear? A lot of people have asked me that. I, I think um, I do probably view it as medicine, uh, rightly or wrongly, sort of at the end of my breakfast, taking it as if it were medicine. That suits me fine. Um, and, and I think I'll probably carry on doing it like that. But no, I, haven't, I haven't become enamoured with the taste, I can assure you. A very amusing sort of thought, the way to eat nuts, just sort of knock it back with a drink. Actually, one often knocks back nuts with drinks, actually, <laughs> come to think of it, uh, in a different sort of way. Gents, thanks so much for joining us. Really interesting. Richard, Professor Till, uh, good to speak. And just uh, uh, reiterating uh, the point that uh, Professor Till made clear, that this is not something uh, to try at home uh, in any way, shape or form.